Joe Meehan, and we are here in front of the Arizona Historical Society Pioneer Museum, and we're going to be talking about the Baldwin Articulated Locomotive Number 12 that sits out here. The locomotive was built by the Baldwin Locomotive Works in Philadelphia in 1929. And originally it was built for the Hammond Lumber Company in Oregon. And the color at that time was green with a silver firebox around the, the stack. And it served there for a number of years as a logging engine. And it later went to the Arcata and Mad River Railroad in Northern California. Became, it was used as a logging engine, but it eventually became an excursion train there. And sometime in the mid-1950s, it was sold by the Arcata and Mad River to the, Arizona, to the Southwest Lumber Company here in Flagstaff, Arizona. It came here and was used for pulling logs uh, out of the forest in a number of, mainly south around Lake Mary, Mormon Lake area. And then eventually was replaced by um, semi-trucks that came into the area and were removing the, the logs, bringing them to the mill. And at that point, the engine again became an excursion train, uh, taking people down on some of the logging railroads uh, into the Lake Mary Mormon Lake area to see the area, see the scenery. The engine was used uh, as an excursion train up into the mid-1960s. The track ran through what we know of today as Fort Tuthill, which it was the fort then, um, and it broke down right in front of the main gate of Fort Tuthill on a track that came through there and came up to the lumber mill. It ceased being used and was donated to Coconino County as an exhibit, as a display, uh, around 1965. It sat there for a number of years, um, Eventually, due to an accident of someone falling off of it, it was fenced and it was fell into disrepair. It was repainted a number of times by the local model railroad club and eventually was the, the track was settling and it was becoming what the county felt was a nuisance. And they were going to get rid of it, but a local preservation railroad preservationist um, worked through with the county and managed to get the train donated to the Pioneer Museum. And it sat originally, or it was moved off of county property onto a piece of state land nearby. And then in 1994, it was moved up here to the Pioneer Museum. It was quite an undertaking to put it onto a flatbed truck. The engine, it was so heavy, the engine weighs 110 tons. And um, it was moved up here, the engine was moved on one truck, the tender was moved on another truck, the caboose was moved on a third truck, and it was set up here as an exhibit. It came in a circuitous route through town to avoid overhanging power lines, and was set down here in order to be a lasting memory of our early logging industry, uh, which started the town of Flagstaff. And now for more technical information, we're going to go to Eric. Thanks, Joe. My name's Eric Hatter, and today I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about number 12 here and a little bit how the engine works. All right, so number 12 is a 2662 type of locomotive, and that's identified by the wheel arrangement. It's got two pilot wheels in the front, two sets of drive wheels, each of them with six wheels. So six wheels up front, six wheels behind, and then another two wheels back here underneath the cab. So the way this works, this is an oil burning locomotive. So you've got oil that's stored in your tender, which is behind us, oil and water that's stored in the tender. And then you've got a firebox right here in front of the cab. So the oil flows from the tender down into the firebox and it burns in the firebox. It flows over a jet of steam and it sprays out through the firebox. That's called an atomizer. So as the oil sprays out through there, it burns and then there's tubes inside the boiler that run up to the front where the stack is. The front is called the smoke box. So all your combustion gases, your exhaust from the fire, run through tubes up to the smoke box and then out the smoke stack. So 
Those tubes inside the boiler and around the firebox, that's all surrounded by water inside your boiler. So as that heat from the oil radiates against the, the metal inside the firebox, and then it transfers that heat into the water, and the water gets hot, and it boils, and of course, it produces steam. So our steam is collected in the steam dome, which is up here on top of the boiler. That's the highest point of the boiler, so that's where your hottest, driest steam is gonna collect. And there's a throttle valve in there, which is controlled by the engineer in the cab. So you have a valve there that he's able to open, and the steam comes from there down through pipes down to your cylinders. And this locomotive has got four sets of cylinders, uh, two sets for each of the drive wheels. So it's gonna push against your piston inside your cylinder, and it's gonna push the piston, which is gonna push rods, which are connected to the wheels. And as those pistons push the rods and they push against the wheels, it's gonna cause the wheels to go round and round. Now, this engine is kind of unique compared to a lot of other locomotives. It's what's referred to as an articulated engine. In areas like logging areas, like we had in Northern Arizona, they would build the railroads very temporarily. So they would go out and they would build the track out to a specific cutting area. They would cut all the trees and then they would tear up the track and they would move to another area. So they didn't spend a lot of time building really smooth railroad grades. So they needed locomotives that could negotiate tight turns, steep grades, and rough track. So this is a fairly large locomotive for a logging operation. So in order to, comp uh, to handle that type of trackage, they built it articulated. So in the middle, you've got a hinge joint. So the front set of drivers move separately from the boiler. So as it goes around, the boiler and the, the drive wheels would be on the bottom and the boiler would stay rigid. And as it goes around the track, then the wheels would articulate so it can go around tighter curves. And this locomotive is referred to as a Mali. Mali is a French term that's named after the engineer that designed it in France. A Mali is a particular type of an articulated design where you have your four cylinders, but you have two high pressure cylinders and then you have two low pressure cylinders. So your rear set of cylinders are your high pressure cylinders. So after your steam goes into your high pressure cylinders, pushes the piston, which pushes the rods and makes the wheels turn, then what steam is left then goes into your low pressure cylinders, which are at the front. So you're using the steam twice. Then after it, that's why the front cylinders are larger diameter than the rear cylinders because it's got less pressure. So in order to have an equivalent amount of force, you have to have a bigger diameter of your piston. So after it goes through your high pressure cylinders, then it goes into your smokestack or into your smoke box and the steam goes out the stack. As the steam goes out the stack, it has some velocity to it. It still has some energy and that creates a draft which then helps to suck the uh, air into your firebox and then make your fire burn hotter. So remember, all your exhaust gases are going through tubes up into your boiler or through your boiler up into your smoke box. So by creating a vacuum in your smoke box, that draws the smoke faster through the tubes from your firebox and helps bring fresh air into your firebox in order to fan your fire and produce draft and help make your fire burn hotter. Now this locomotive was also built originally as a tank engine. So in areas where they did not want to, um, locomotives were not operating a large distance, they may have wanted to save weight um, or maybe they wanted to save length. So they would not carry a tender behind them like this locomotive has right now. They would carry the fuel and the water on the locomotive and eliminate the tender. So there would have been a tank here at the back of the cab, a small tank to carry your oil and then your water would go into a tank on that was straddled the boiler up on the sides of the running boards. So tank engine. So some of you might be familiar with Thomas the tank engine. And yeah, that's a similar sort of concept. You've got tanks up here on the side that would hold your water and that would be used, that's your replenishment water to go into your boiler. So as you're boiling the water and you're making the steam and you're pushing the pistons and the steam is being exhausted out to atmosphere, you've got to replace that water so that you don't run out. And so that's where you carry your stored water. And so this one had tanks on the side in order to do that. When it came to Arizona, I believe, is when they took the tanks off and they added the tender behind it because Southwest Lumber wanted to be able to operate the locomotive over larger distances and they were worried about running out of fuel and water. So they put a tender behind it in order to allow the locomotive to operate longer distances. That's a little bit of a tour of the number 12 here. So hope you guys enjoyed it and let's send it back to Joe. Thanks, Eric. As he pointed out, that 
the technology of another century was a little bit more complicated than most people understand. And if you want to see this engine and you want to enjoy the size of it and all that it took to run, you can come up here to the Pioneer Museum, you can visit the museum, you can see the engine itself and really enjoy the magnitude of what was involved in the early logging industry of the 1900s. Thank you for watching today and I hope this has brought you some information that might encourage you to come up here to the Pioneer Museum and take a look at our locomotive number 12.